السلام علیکم پروگرام ایمبیسی روڈ میں خوش آمدید ناظرین آج ہمارے اس پروگرام میں ہمارے مہمان ہیں پاکستان میں ایران کے سفیر جناب میدی ہنر دوست وہ چند ہفتے پہلے یہاں اپنی ذمہ داریاں سبالنے کے لیے آئے ہیں وہ پاکستان اور ایران کے درمیان تعلقات کو بہتر بنانا چاہتے ہیں خاص طور پر معیشت اور تجارت کے شعبوں میں وہ چاہتے ہیں کہ دونوں ملک ایک دوسرے کے قریب آئے اور دونوں ملکوں کی تجارت اور معیشت جو ہے اس میں وسعت آئے اس کے لیے وہ خاص طور پر کام کرنا چاہتے ہیں آج ہم ان سے گفتگو کریں گے امیسٹر تھینک یو ویری مچ فار جوائننگ اس ان دس پروگرام امیسٹر ناؤ دی سینکشنز امپوزڈ آن ایران بائی امریکہ ان دا ویسٹ ہیو بین لفٹڈ دا جنرل ویو از دیٹ ایران ول بی ویری ڈفرینٹ from what it has been in the last 30 years, in the days to come, in, in future. What is your view on that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. At the first, thank you very much to you and the cameraman uh, that here and prepare this uh, opportunity that I talk with to you and the lovely people of the Pakistan. Uh, yes, as you mentioned, right now after the removal, the sanctions, Uh, there is a new, there are a new opportunity for the working hard, for the working hard, and we activate the, all of the potentialities that we have regarding to the all of the aspects of relation with the world, especially with uh, our neighbors and top of them, the Pakistanians brothers. Uh, we believe that. Uh, After that, after this sanction that we suffered for more than uh, one decade directly and after revolution indirectly, uh, this new atmosphere helps to us not only to Iran, but also prepare opportunities for all of the world and the region. But one view is that uh, now that uh, the sanctions have been lifted by the West, the policy of Iran uh, will change towards America and the Western world. It will be a soft policy uh, by Iran. And those slogans, which were very popular during the revolution, like uh, Marg Bar America, these slogans are no longer there or will not be there. Uh, before that, I should uh, elaborate this matter That's all. When we said we are against the Western approach and uh, policies, it doesn't mean that we have any uh, problem with the Western people. When we said that uh, we are against the American approach to their views to political and some other aspects of the relation with the world, especially in the region and my country, because the uh, minds of my country man is full of the bad memories of that country anyway uh, and so when we are against to the american it means that only against to some approach policies policies and dual you approach to the some important issues that nowadays with the, all of the worst they are suffering uh, they are suffering a lot of pain of that as like as the terrorism as like as the human rights, as like as the other phenomenon. And so there is no difference between Iranian looking to the principles they, uh, before and after the uh, uh, sanctions, and we are looking for further cooperation in the new uh, atmosphere. What kind of cooperation? Uh, because uh, is it because uh, the sanctions were there and uh, Iran Uh, was deprived of modern technology uh, from the Western countries and now that Iran wants that technology to come to their country and the people of Iran should benefit from that. Is that one important aspect of this new era which will start after the sanctions are lifted? Uh, when we are said that they are pleased to, to remove all of the sanctions, not only for the facilitation for the Iranians obtained to the markets in the world and also to some 
know-how and the technical uh, equipment that we need. But also, it, share, it can help that for more Iranian share and the, the foreign countries uh, shares to the some regional and international uh, issues that uh, they both sides can with, uh, they can solve it with interaction. For example, we believe that uh, it is better be looking for the political solution for many issues and the conflicts that we have nowadays in the world, especially in the region, and so. Anybody knows that uh, the only way of these conflicts is the sharing of the some key role and high profile countries that they can come to the term for solving that. And so I believe that the new atmosphere of the sanctions may be, and the hope for the support in this atmosphere for more interaction for solving the regional and international issues by the cooperation and more interaction. Excellency, when uh, the revolution was brought about in Iran in 1979 by Ayatollah Khomeini, the Western values which were being followed by Iran in those days, they were actually uh, departed with, they were finished, and a new era of Islamic revolution started. Some people think, some thinkers, some critics believe that when the Western and American influence will come to Iran, Iran will change. As I said, my friend, as I said, oh, we have a lot of bad things in our internal, internal affairs. affairs. Yes. yes. And so, according to the Iranian clear and transparent position that many times we announced, by our, our by Iranian authorities, uh, we are ready for the better cooperation if they set aside their behavior that uh, was fully wrong against Iran. But exactly and directly to your question is that uh, we uh, during the revolution, the Iranian revolution announced some new principles to approach to the global and uh, exactly to the arrogant powers in the world. And so there is no changes and uh, any cooperation in many fields never aspect, never impact to the Iranian revolutionary impact uh, beliefs. So the spirit of the Iranian revolution will continue. It is not going to be dampened. It is not go going to be impacted by the Western culture, by the Western values, and the Western thinking? Uh, of course, my brother, you know, uh, from the beginning on the victory of the revolution, we announced that, for example, we are against uh, for the, any interference by the superpowers in the region and the internal, uh, internal affairs of the countries. It not only is about my territory, but also we said that it is our principles position to the all of the world. And so if you uh, consider this as a main principle of the uh, Islamic revolution, yes, there is no differences, there is no changes in that. And uh, of course, the Iranian people, because of their long and rich history, they never bend uh, to the any new Not values pressure. by the Western. But Islam, as you know, my brother, is the religion of the peace. And also the Iranian culture. As you know, in the last two centuries, every time Iran was the harbinger and the initiator for the peace policy towards the region. And so, we believe that uh, our basic uh, principles of the revolution is focused on the peace and tranquility in the region. And uh, so we are looking for the more interaction and cooperation with our uh, neighbors in the region for activate and materialize that principles. Many Iranian young people uh, probably will go to West for education now. 
because you know you can't stop the young people from going and taking admission in the universities of the western countries the us and the european and these young people uh, when they are going to be affected uh, by that culture western culture and western thinking western values uh, do you think that they are going to create an impact on the iranian society inside iran uh, your view is very good and but it is true to some you know not as a long history and the civilized country as like as iran that the in the history he uh, proved that the Iranian civilization, civilization survived. has survived and also impacts to the civilizations of the world, not other civilizations. Not other civilizations. Yes. And the other side, uh, during the, you know, the revolution and the part of the regime, the, all of the generation, the young generation that came to the street and they started and flared up the revolution, most of them, they are graduated from the universities of the abroad. And so uh, during that time, our uh, capabilities in education was so low than here that we have a lot of potentiality in our country. And so during that time, we have a lot of students out of the country that they came back and they became as a, some part of the revolution. Excellency, some of the neighbors, you said that you want to ha have very good friendly cooperative relations with your neighbors but some of the neighbors they apprehend that when iran becomes militarily strong they will acquire uh, more weapons they will build their conventional army and iran will put pressure on them will intimidate them this is a view uh, being expressed by some people in your neighborhood uh, let me tell you something. Uh, it is absolutely and definitely clear that uh, Iran phobia is one of the methods and leverage that some countries they try to flare up and uh, to this matter because of the, some considerations. How can they come to the send uh, the military equipment to the small countries? Without the Iran phobia, they need to uh, activate. They need to, you know, uh, to have a to create a this, this and create yeah. a new, uh, you know, atmosphere for the phobia for the small countries that Iran would like to do this, and so it is a good market for them for selling their uh, military equipment. But something that it is. Uh, definitely clear according to the new situation of the Iran uh, with full of the technology and uh, Iran in some aspects and branches of the technology and science is in the one of the tens better uh, uh, countries in the world and so we need to peace and tranquility around our borders for more development yes. Iran is full of the young generation uh, we are 18 million population, 65% of our population is under 35 years old. It means we have something around 45 million or uh, young generation, people, young yes. people. They need to job, they need to some opportunities to nip to the atmosphere for more we activated. And so they never needed to, that the Iran put the uh, oil to the fire with the regional conflict. What is, who is the beneficent? Yes, and true. And as I mentioned, my friend, as I mentioned, if you look to the history, in recent centuries, Iran never and never fought any foreign aggressors. Yes, that's true. But uh, in order to uh, remove this, this fear from your neighbors, uh, the Iranian policy uh, towards the neighbors will be of cooperation, of help, and peace. Of course. We offered we offered, and many times we announced our clear stance regarding to this matter, that please, please, let us, the all the regional countries, they are able to solve their problem. They never need to any foreign policy, foreign countries interfere in our affairs, and it is better to come to talk about it. And 
the experiments and the background of the, all of the conflicts uh, prove that the negotiation and dialogue is better than the other ways for up, coming up to the uh, so thank you. We'll take a short break. Now we take a short break. After the break, we will be back with the Pakistan and Iran. The Pakistan and the Iran are the same. 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 The اور تعاون پر مبنی تعلقات چاہتا ہے ایران آفٹر دی ریولوشن ہیز ہیڈ اے ویری اسٹرانگ پالیسی ٹوڈس اسرائیل بیکاز اسرائیلیز ہیو انلیشڈ انپریسیڈینٹیڈ ٹیرر آن دی پیلسٹینین پیپل انوسینٹ پیلسٹینین پیپل اینڈ ایران ایکچولی واز ان دا فور فرنٹ ٹو کنڈیم دیز پالیسیز امام خمینی انٹروڈیوس دی آئیڈیا آف یوم القدس سو آفٹر دیز سینکشنز آر ریموڈ اینڈ دے آر لفٹیڈ یور پالیسی ٹوڈس اسرائیل ول چینج اٹ ول بیکم سافٹ واٹس یور ویو آن دیٹ سر فار دا آفٹر دا اسلامک ریولوشن اور وکٹری وی انانس دیٹ وی نیور ریکوگنائز Uh, the Zionist regime because we believe they are responsible of the heinous deeds that nowadays you have regarding to the poor people of the Palestine. Of course we announced our clear stance regarding to the matter but, and we said it is better you go directly to the voters of the people. They are Christians, they are Maronis, they are Sunnis, they are Shias, they are some Christians, they are some other religion. It is better to go directly to their voters. And the people of the re region, and that uh, region is a Palestinian region, they create and they can choose their uh, destiny. But it is definitely clear that they are imposed to them and they are occupied region, of course, of course we said no country has right to interfere in the internal affairs of any countries. And we said our uh, position as a part of the globe of Islam, that it is better, it is better you go through along with the Palestinians' rights. And so we, up to now and up to future, we never recognize the Zionist regime. The initiatives that were taken by U.S., European Union, other countries, even Russia was there, uh, to solve the issue of Palestine. The two-state, uh, two-nation, two-state idea that was floated some time back, uh, and Israel said, uh, to some extent, they, they said, yes, we recognize this, but they have never implemented it. Exactly. So, so do you think that uh, some change will take place or Israel will continue this policy of, uh, of imposing her hegemonistic designs on Palestinian people? According to the evidence, a lot of evidence, right, that the Zionist regime, uh, up to now they didn't accept this position. But something I mentioned and I repeat is, it is better exactly you should uh, you should materialize the desire and the wishes and of the people of the Palestine. And they want their own country, their own territory. It is evident to all. And so uh, I hope and I pray to God Almighty as a human being, as a part of the uh, for better situation and solving this long term conflict. It is better you administrate, administrate the rights of the oppressed people of the Palestine. Now coming to Pakistan-Iran relations, the two brotherly neighboring countries. Uh, Ambassador, that you are here in Islamabad, what is your strategy to improve relations between the two countries? Uh, you know, the 
commercial relations, the, com the trade relations between the two neighboring countries are not very good, were not very enviable, and they need to be expanded. So what is your strategy uh, uh, in this regard? Thank you. This is a very good question because anybody knows that the political relation between the countries is very best. It's very, ni it's very nice and so uh, we have no weakness regarding this matter. But only something that is definitely clear is that the authorities of the two countries, they are not convinced and satisfied about the bilateral figure. It is a little, it's very big, very small. And because of the two big countries, without any impediment, without any consideration, with full of the good memories and the long history, uh, coexistence, why? Why? And so, as a priority of mine, as a mandate that I had, and I offered and talked about it with the Iranian, with the Pakistani friends here, that we should activate and according to the wills of the two high profile authorities, we should be rich to five billion per year. Uh, and so it is the first step. Also, we believe that capacity and capability is more than this. But as a uh, realistic steps, we should try to have it. And the big project that we have and the mega project that we are following up as the first is the uh, gas pipeline. Uh, Iranian gas is next to uh, Pakistan borders. And so in one step, they, it can come. And you know, it is evidence, totally evidence, that the Iranian gas entrance in the Pakistan's borders, uh, it, uh, be as a, uh, it put the uh, economy of this country on the jump. It will boost, boost to the Pakistan exactly. economy. Exactly, yes. exactly. And put your economy on jumping board for the uh, very rapid promotion. But, but Ambassador, you mentioned the, uh, the impediments and obstruction on the way of expanding uh, trade and economic relations between Pakistan and Iran. Have you identified what are these obstructions? What are these impediments? Uh, I said that we should, we should remove the, all of this. <coughs> For example, because of these international sanctions, yes. they imposed some impediments to the uh, SWIFT, for example, and the other aspect of the cooperation and, inter and uh, interaction that nowadays in the international trade we needed as a principles, as a first element of the doing. And so we, we expect to our brothers in Pakistan that after the five plus one agreement functional, it is better as a first step the, uh, the transaction and uh, cooperation banking system should be removed, should be uh, reactivated. And the second, and the second uh, that uh, we are waiting for that is that uh, we are waiting for the 20s. 20th round of the Joint Commission, Economic Joint Commission of the two countries, that it is more important and very important because, because it will be held after, in the, uh, after the sanctions at, in the new horizons and the new atmosphere. Uh, as, a, as, diff, as impediments that we have, as impediments that we have, is that we should set aside the traditional methods because two countries has a lot of potentials. And uh, anybody knows that it is the best way of the trying and interaction to size for or uh, activate these potentialities and uh, try to reach to the uh, brighter horizon and the future of the countries. And so our difficulties and our dip the, uh, impediments are not so much, but we should try a few of them that we have with uh, expedite and uh, uh, expedite the uh, trend of the cooperation and be sure about it. We have a lot of branches and vacant seat and vacant channels that uh, they, all of them can be activated. And I'm here as a burden of the matter on my shoulders and our embassy that I promised the two sides authorities during my tenure, I reached to the, the, the maximum. maximum figure. Okay. But uh, have you identified the areas where the uh, trade can increase, where we can 
do more trade and as, as you have said that at least it should be climbing to the level of five billion dollars a year. So what are the pros, uh, possible areas where the trade can be expanded? You know, uh, after the Iran, uh, as a mega project, Iranian gas, and after that is that the Iranian electricity that right now we are uh, import, uh, we are export to Pakistan. But the other side, we said that the Iran, as you know, Iran is the uh, uh, good. Uh, they have good uh, uh, geographical uh, conditions here, and so we have 15 countries as neighbors. And so, one of the advantages that we are ready to grant and we offer to our Pakistani brothers is that using Iran as a trans, uh, transit uh, way to reach to the many countries around our country. Yeah. And so, connectivity, connectivity and, and transport and export. Mm. And also in the eco capacity, ECO. Yes. ECO also, we believe that there are some uh, potentialities that the both sides can activate it. And the other side that the both can, uh, can uh, work is the tourism. As you know, a lot of, a lot of people from have visited to each other country, to each other country, and so we are ready for uh, activate and facilitate more than this. And the other side for the trying we have is a direct flight from Islamabad to Tehran. Because a lot of passengers that we have, and because of the, some shortages in the aviation facilities, we had it already, and so we are waiting for the for that. And the other side, and also that we are would like to work it, is the our mm, mar, uh, border markets. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, we, uh, we have uh, a line uh, borders, and we have some point as a markets in the border. And we are trying, as a next program, uh, to activate them. To, to m m make more crossing points. Crossing points. For increasing the border trade. And it, because it impacts to the uh, level of li life of the uh, peoples in the region. And we believe many uh, not so good phenomenon and issues can be solved under the better welfare and the wealth of the people in the borders. Uh, but, uh, Master, uh, we keep reading the reports that Iranian oil and diesel is being smuggled into Pakistan. There are other items which are also smuggled from Iran into Pakistan. How to regularize this trade? Because this is informal trade, and both countries probably are losing revenue on this, getting from it. Uh, how to do it? Uh, my friend, uh, for stopping this phenomenon and this issue, it is better we try to activate the regular and f official Trade. channels. Because when you haven't official channels as like as during the sanctions period, okay, smuggling of the items, um, it is maybe not so strange. strange. And so, I believe, I believe the new round of the Joint Commission that next future we had, uh, the date is fixed? Not fixed, but hopefully the, this year. This no, year, this year okay. we have it, but not exactly firm the time. Uh, I believe that many, many uh, pending and suspend issues and uh, items that we have can be offered for the rising up and talking about the face to face and reach to a uh, roadmap for cooperation. And one of the sides is our borders uh, issues. The, uh, under the borders committee issues is one of them is the smuggling that it's not benefit to the mm, uh, to centralized you know government I think it's better can be regulated thank you ambassador will take another short break and then we'll come back nazreen ek aur mukhtasar break lete hain aur break se wapsi ke baad hum pakistan mein iran ke safir e mohtaram se mazid guftgu jari rakhenge wo chahte hain ke pakistan aur iran ke darmiyan tijarat ko farooq diya jaye معاشی تعاون کو بڑھایا جائے اور وہ بتا رہے ہیں کہ کس طرح سفیر سے دی گیس لائن دا گیس پائپ لائن پروجیکٹ از ویری امپورٹنٹ اٹ واز سائنڈ مینی ایئرز بیک اٹ واز سائنڈ وین دی سینکشنز آر دیئر آن ایران بٹ ناؤ دا سینکشنز آر نو لنگر دیئر پاکستان نیڈس فیول گیس الیکٹریسٹی 
so do you think uh, in, in realistic terms that this project will take off, that Iran and Pakistan both will implement uh, this project, this agreement, because the government here in Islamabad keeps saying that we want this project to be completed. Uh, as you said, my brother, uh, it will be uh, as a mega project for the two sides, and uh, it is a, uh, the gas has a key role in the industry and trade and the promotion of the business and the welfare of the people of the Pakistan. And uh, so, as you said, Pakistan needs more energy. And so, are, so I thought they are looking to the, some other alternates. But one of the uh, best and cheapest and fast neighboring and country. neighboring yeah. and with good looking and the, uh, is uh, looking to uh, by the approach of the country is Iran. And so, uh, I believe, according to the realities, the both sides, they, uh, they reach to this point that it is the viable and practicable. And so, as a next step, they are waiting for the uh, new round of the talking between high profiles and the related authorities as the two oil ministers. Our oil minister was supposed to go to Tehran. Is he going there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was supposed to go, but uh, we are waiting for the fixing the time and for uh, for okay. coordination. And after that, uh, the both sides can reach to a uh, practical uh, result for continuation and implementation and materialize this agreement. And the second step is that the Pakistan side should try as fast as they can uh, to fulfill their commitment. Because as I said, the Iranian gas are next uh, to the border. To the border, yes. And so we are waiting for the fulfillment of the Pakistan side for their commitment from their, uh, from the Nawab Shah to Gwadar and so. So the, the pipeline has to be laid down by Pakistan now on this side. Uh, yes. But we, only the small distance that we should do it, it is so small and we can do it in so short, in very short uh, time. Time, yes. But, uh, and so according uh, to your question, as a first step, we are waiting for the two face to face talking with the two ministers, and the second, uh, the give our, uh, you know, the t a time schedule for the fulfillment of the Pakistan side for their commitment and be sure about it that the Iranian gas uh, comes to this uh, lovely country and uh, impact to many sides of the lives of the people. Uh, some reports claimed, uh, some reports which were printed in the press that the price of gas, uh, the, uh, the gas price for the Iranian gas is a contentious issue. It is a dispute and uh, there is some misunderst uh, misunderstanding on this. The price issue is resolved. Uh, my friend, according to the technical aspect of the matter, right now is not the proper time for the talking about the price. Uh, you are talking about the price when uh, the facilities and infrastructure facilities, they are ready and you want to uh, open the tap after that, you talk about the price. And be sure about that the Iranians have very good consideration in regard to the uh, Pakistani people and government. Uh, Iranian oil, now that uh, Iran has plenty of oil and Iran produces a lot of oil, can Pakistan also import? We had already, but stopped a few years back. The but reason? What is the reason, sir? Uh, of course, maybe some reason, but it is out of my knowledge right now why. But uh, that stopped. But the Iranian side also, they said we are ready, and also the Pakistani side, they are ready for having that uh, Iranian oil, and it is the other subject that under negotiating on discussion between two oil ministers. The refinery, Pakistan also needs refineries. So Iran has a lot of experience of running, setting up uh, oil refineries. Is there a possibility that Iran can set up a refinery in Pakistan to refine the petroleum products, oil products? We, we, offered, we offered some proposals that in uh, uh, Iranian have fully 
uh, experience and also a lot of uh, capable uh, cap capable there for building up some refineries and also gas generators and some other technical uh, equipments that uh, you needed for the promotion of your economy and so in this uh, uh, this matter is also is in our uh, agenda. agenda for talking and negotiating. Uh, Mr. Uh, another issue that worries uh, the Islamic world is uh, uh, tense relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Uh, Pakistanis want uh, that these two countries should uh, get closer to each other. They should resolve their internal differences and the Islamic world should emerge as a united front vis-a-vis -vis the West and other blocs. Uh, will this happen? Uh, my friend, any, any tension is not to the benefit of the uh, globe of Islam. We never and never were initiator with new country in the globe of Islam. Saudi Arabia is uh, one of the uh, biggest Islamic country, and so we never, we never started to tense relation. But uh, they, uh, uh, of course, of course, they, uh, regarding this matter, the ball is not in our court, and uh, they misuse it, misuse it. Uh, one, uh, you know accident that was totally out of our control and also we we arrested the responsible of that uh, accident setting the embassy on fire the embassy fire, yes and we arrested and as we promised as we promised that we follow up and uh, we will be ar we will arrest the responsible of this matter and also we did it our uh, promise anyway they did the cutting the relation that started by the Saudi Arabia was not mutual benefit, was not the benefit to Islam, global of Islam. Hopefully they'll be restored. Yeah, and, and, then, and so because of this aspect and the view of the Iranians that we accepted the, uh, Mr. Prime Minister's... Yes, that's uh, my issue. next question. Yeah. Uh, our Prime Minister went to Riyadh, the, he also went to Tehran, so you think that this is going to produce some good results? Will it be fruitful? Well, of course, that was good gesture by the Mr. Prime Minister of Pakistan. But you know, the problems of the Syria Arabia with Iran is was not that uh, embassy accident. It's more than that. It's more than that, and so uh, maybe the all of them, all of them are not solvable in one session. But something but that through a process of dialogue. Of course, of course. But we said thanks to Mr. Prime Minister with this good gesture as a uh, Prime Minister of one Muslim country in the globe of Islam. It is better. And we said welcome to any initiator in this regard to all for all of the conflicts in the globe of Islam. Because attention is not benefit to anybody in the world. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Nazin, uh, aaj is program mein aapne پاکستان میں ایران کے سفیر محترم جناب مہدی ہنردوس کی گفتگو سنی انہوں نے پاکستان اور ایران کے درمیان تجارت اور معیشت کو بہتر بنانے پر زور دیا ان کا کہنا ہے کہ پاکستان اور ایران دونوں بہت قریبی دوست ملک ہیں پڑوسی ملک ہیں اور گیس پائپ لائن منصوبہ جو ہے بالکل تیار ہے اور پاکستان کو اس سے استفادہ کرنا چاہیے ان کا یہ کہنا ہے کہ ایران اپنے انقلابی منشور سے جو انقلاب اسلامی انقلاب برپا کیا گیا ایران میں ان سے نہیں ہٹے گا ان پر سختی سے کار بند رہے گا اور ان کا یہ کہنا ہے کہ وہ سعودی عربیہ کے ساتھ بہتر تعلقات چاہتے ہیں وہ بات چیت کے ذریعے تمام مسائل حل کرنا چاہتے ہیں انہوں نے پاکستان کے وزیر اعظم نواز شریف کی طرف سے جو کوشش کی گئی دونوں ملکوں کے درمیان مصالحت کی اس کی تعریف کی ہے اسی کے ساتھ یہ پروگرام ختم ہوتا ہے جاوید صدیق کو اجازت دیجئے خدا حافظ
Excellency, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much to you and your colleagues. Thank you very much. Pleasure talking.